No other king could vanquish the war horse or silence the warrior's rage while riding the lowly back of a donkey. No other king could break the dominion of darkness, the tyranny of evil, with a reign of grace and a kingdom of peace. No other king could give his life for the redemption of rebels, his wealth to welcome the outcast. Jesus is that king, the king of glory, son of the living God. Not just another king, not just another prophet, not just another teacher. He was the one the world had been waiting for. The one to deliver us from captivity, the son of David and Abraham's chosen seed. He is the goal of the Mosaic law, Yahweh in the flesh. He is the one to establish God's reign and rule, to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, freedom to the prisoners, and proclaim good news to the poor. This Jesus was the creator come to earth and the beginning of a new creation. He embodied the covenant, fulfilled the commandments, and reversed the curse. This Jesus is the Christ that God spoke of to the serpent, the one prefigured to Noah in the flood, the one promised to Abraham, the one guaranteed to Moses before he died, the one promised to David during his reign, the one revealed to Isaiah as a suffering servant, the one predicted through the prophets and prepared for through John the Baptist. He is the Father's Son, Savior of the world, and substitute for our sins. More loving, more holy, and more wonderfully terrifying than we ever thought possible. He is our Jesus, and there is no other king like him. He is our God, our glory, our victorious Savior. There is no other king like him. There is no other king. Well, good morning. Happy Easter. Today is Easter Day, Resurrection Day, and we're going to be celebrating the fact, the actual fact, that Jesus rose from the dead. And because he died for us and he rose from the dead, everything is different. And we've got such uh, a lot to celebrate, such a reason to be people who celebrate. Today is Celebration Day, it's Resurrection Day, and I really hope you sing along wholeheartedly this morning and the, the talk is, is helpful for you and you really feel connected even though we are physically separate. So let's worship the Lord together in this amazing song of worship. Happy Easter, everyone. It's good to be with you all online. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, let's celebrate Jesus' resurrection together. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same as you came there. From the everlasting to the world we live, the Father's only Son. Cause you lived and you died and you rose again on high. And you opened the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah for all you've done. Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same as you came near. From the everlasting to the world we live, the Father's only Son. Could you 
sing praise to you and we say hallelujah for what you have done because what you've done is the most incredible most wonderful amazing thing ever that you made a way that we could have relationship and life with you what a joy it is to know you what a joy it is to have that relationship father god thank you for your love thank you for all that you've done we praise your holy name this morning thank you jesus amen is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. In Christ alone. Cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face. I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. I know. Savior's love 
its sound Oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone for less I stand before the throne when he shall come with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone For bless I stand before the throne through the storm. made an assumption about something and then based quite a lot on that assumption uh, only to begin to wonder at some stage down the track what if I've got this wrong now I bet that was the thought that went through Edward Smith's mind you might never have heard of Edward Smith but um, you'll recognize him when I tell you what his job was Edward Smith was the captain of the Titanic and he'd been quoted as saying the following he said, I cannot imagine any condition that would cause a ship to founder. Modern shipbuilding has gone beyond that. Or how about the person who in 1932 said, there is not the slightest indication uh, that nuclear energy will ever be obtainable. That was Albert Einstein. We make assumptions all the time. Quite often, they're completely wrong. Like the bank president giving advice in 1903 to someone asking whether they should invest in Ford Motor Company. And the bank manager said this, true story, the horse is here to stay, but the automobile is only a novelty, a fad. It can be dangerous to base too much on assumptions, can't it? Well, Easter brings another huge assumption into focus. Today, all around the world, millions upon millions of people, well, would normally be celebrating Easter together. We're apart, we're separated, but we're still celebrating Easter. It's the most celebrated event in history. It's more than just a nice idea. It's a historical fact. We date our calendar by it. And yet, according to a survey that was conducted by a certain newspaper, 52% of those asked why Easter is celebrated had no idea it was to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. 
It's the crucial point of everything that's ever happened, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But almost as soon as it happened, people were saying, but what if your assumption is wrong? What if Jesus Christ really didn't rise from the dead? What if the resurrection didn't really happen? Now, people used to ask that question of of St. Paul, and he put his answer to that down in writing one day. And he said, you know, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then we have nothing to preach and you have nothing to believe. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is a delusion and you're still lost in your sins. If Christ didn't rise from the dead, then everything is a waste of time. Everything we hope for is useless. And a lot of people have put their hope in Jesus Christ, having risen from the dead. For example, um, an incident uh, that, that George Bush George Bush Sr. witnessed, President uh, George Bush, when he represented the United States uh, at the funeral of former Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev. Uh, he, was, he saw an, a silent act of great courage carried out by Brezhnev's widow. Now, she stood motionless by the coffin until seconds before it was closed. Then, just as the soldiers touched the lid, Brezhnev's wife did something that must surely rank uh, as one of the most profound acts of civil disobedience ever committed. She reached down and made the sign of the cross on her husband's chest. See, there in the, the capital of secular atheistic power, the wife of the man who had run it all hoped that her husband was wrong. She hoped that there was another life and that that life was best represented by Jesus who died on the cross and that the same Jesus might have mercy on her husband. She hoped her husband's assumption was wrong. Now the good news for her and for millions of other people is what St. Paul says next. He said, but the truth is that Christ has been raised from the dead. It really did happen. The defining event of history, and that means that he's alive today. He's here now. It also means that all the promises that he made 2,000 years ago are still relevant right now. His resurrection 2,000 years ago changed lives almost beyond recognition. And that's exactly what he can do for us today, for your life, for my life. Now, how do I know that? Well, because the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. He doesn't change and neither to his promises. And I'd like to focus this morning on three particular ways that the resurrection proves that he can change your life, my life. Because he's alive today, he can still change lives. How exactly? Well, firstly, his resurrection proves that his purpose is still unchangeable. Jesus Christ can bring purpose to your life. He's still in the same business that he's always been in. And the Bible sums that purpose up in one sentence. I have come that you might have life and have it to the fullest. You know, Oscar Wilde once said, the rarest thing in the world is to find someone who is really alive. Most people survive life. They they don't really live it. The writer Elizabeth Leward summed this up well when she wrote, I have never learned so much as when my children were small. They taught me how to see the world anew, to question the nature of God and the function of man. When we are little, we have no natural limitations. Soon the world will teach us our place and tell us that we cannot achieve the goals that we set ourselves, that we're too old, too stupid, or too clever. 
But for now, everything is possible. Some people, she says, some people never grow out of that marvellous strength and they are the ones who change the world. And it's true, isn't it? As we grow up, we tend to have our hopes and our dreams squeezed out of us. But Jesus Christ's purpose is for you and me to experience real life, not just existence. His purpose isn't to bind us into a whole set of thou shalt nots, but to set us free. If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. That's his purpose, to set you free to experience real life. Not just existence, but real life. But his purpose for us isn't just to, to set us free and to, to make the best of life on our own. His purpose in dying for us is to invite us into God's family. The Bible says, because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would make us his sons, his children. This was his pleasure and purpose. You know, a lot of people have the, the, the conception, if I really give my life to Christ, then he'll restrict me to all those do's and don'ts and my life will be miserable. You know, that is ridiculous. But that's what a lot of people think about God. It's just not true. Jesus Christ died for us and rose again for us to set us free to live the very best life. Not to make us more miserable. Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he's not some dead and buried memory. He's still alive today, and his purpose for our lives is still the same. To set us free, to be members of his family, where we can experience the very best of life. And then the resurrection can change your life because it proves his power is still available. You know, everybody likes to think, and it's a delusion, but everybody likes to think that they have the power to control the circumstances of their life. We all like to think that we've covered all of life's nasty little surprises, don't we? But the truth is, there's very little that we can actually control. We can eat healthily, and go to the gym, apparently. But we can't control whether we're going to succumb to illness or not. We can build a life full of, uh, or a house rather, full of wonderful things. But you can't ensure that the person that we care about the most is going to stay with us to enjoy those things. We can build a great career, but we can't stop being made redundant. The truth is, we have very little say over what happens to affect our lives. But there is a factor that radically changes that situation, and that factor is the resurrection. The Bible says, I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those who believe in him. The same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. And that's saying that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead 2,000 years ago is still available for you and me today, which is great news. Now, sometimes we're in a situation that just isn't going to change, and we need the power to endure, the power just to get through. That power is available to us. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Other times we need the power to change our situation. We've been powerless victims for too long and it's time to rise above the situation and move on. That power is available to us. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. If that power can raise the dead, it can work in your life. If we knew what was up ahead of us, what, what challenges we're going to face, 
then we could perhaps prepare for them. But the problem is we don't. None of us knows what life is going to throw at us, so we can't really prepare. But God does know. The Bible calls Jesus Christ the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows everything that lies ahead of us. He's completely prepared and he knows exactly what we're going to need to deal with what's ahead. And he offers us the power that he knows we're going to need. That's why one particular uh, person in the Bible was, was able to say, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. I wonder if you can say this morning that no matter what life is currently throwing at you or is going to throw at you, you've got the strength to face it. If you're relying on your own strength to face it, you're kidding yourself. It's the power that Christ gives, the same power that raised him from the dead that's going to see you through whatever the situation. The resurrection can change your life because it proves Jesus Christ can bring purpose to your life. Jesus Christ can bring power to your life. And then thirdly, it means his promises are still reliable. You know, we all need hope in our lives, don't we? But the moment hope is gone, well, forget it. There was a small town that the author John Maxwell talks about that was proposed for the site of a great uh, hydroelectric plant. The dam would be built across the river and the town would be submerged. Well, when the project was announced, the people were given quite a number of months to arrange their affairs and relocate. During those months, a curious thing happened. All improvements ceased. No painting was done, no repairs were made on the buildings, all the roads, all the pavements. Day by day, the whole town got shabbier and shabbier. A long time before the waters came, the town looked uncared for and abandoned, even though the people hadn't yet moved away. And one resident explained, where there is no faith in the future, there is no power in the present. And that town was cursed with hopelessness because it had no future. And hope, hope is usually the last thing to go. You, you can't live without hope. And yet as we grow up, the, the naive, trusting kind of hope that children have seems to get eroded. You know, my father used to have a poster in his um, study uh, uh, which, which read like this. Due to the current financial crisis, the light at the end of the tunnel has been extinguished. It's not the most positive poster to have in your study, I'll grant you, but it makes the point. See, people make promises to us, but as we grow up, we realise that often they don't keep those promises. I'll promise to always be your friend. I'll promise to always love you. I promise to vote for you. And so on. One of the sad facts of life is that all too often promises are very fickle things. Well, if that's the case, then God's got a big problem because there are over 7,000 promises in the Bible and of every single one, the Bible says he, God, carries out and fulfills all of God's promises, no matter how many of them there are. Now, that's a big promise. Can God really deliver on that? Well, the Bible says he can. The Lord is faithful to all of his promises and loving towards all he's made. How can he be faithful to all his promises? Well, because he's alive and he's with us today, making sure he fulfills every single one of them. 
When you know you can rely on a promise that someone has made you, that brings incredible hope into your life. It transform you, transforms you. As, as the Bible puts it, <clears throat> having such great promises as these, dear friends, let us turn away from everything wrong, whether of body or spirit, and purify ourselves, living in the wholesome fear of God, giving ourselves to him alone. Having promises you can trust in transforms your life. Now, it may well be, as you're listening or watching this this morning, you've been scarred by broken promises. It may well be that you've been let down by people or that what you've hoped for hasn't come to pass. It may well be that someone has made you a promise and then has moved on and forgotten that they made that promise. But Jesus Christ is a living reality here today. He rose from the dead. He's here right now. And all the promises that the Bible makes, all 7,000 plus of them, he will personally see get to be fulfilled. And the ones that are relevant to you, he'll make sure they are fulfilled in your life. Now, what kind of promises are we talking about? Let's have a look at some of his resurrection promises. For example, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. A lot of people think that Christianity is really complicated and you have to spend a lifetime being really pious to be one of the lucky few that gets picked to go to heaven. The reality is that you don't have to work at it all your life and just hope for the best. You can know that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ for certain right now and that that relationship guarantees you eternity in heaven. You can't perform your way to it. It's a free gift. You know, it may well be that you're listening or watching this this morning, and this is the first time for quite a while. Why not today make the decision to start again with him? and allow him to truly change your life. Today is Resurrection Day. Today is a great day for resurrecting that decision. To allow his purpose and his power and his promises to begin to transform your life. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe it in your heart that God will raise him from the dead, you will be saved. Today, Resurrection Day, why don't we make this the day when we choose to trust his promise, come into that relationship, start that daring adventure of a life with him? Let's pray together, shall we? And Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that you not only died in my place, but you rose again from the dead. Thank you that you proved by your resurrection that you are who you say you are. God himself come into this world in the form of a human being, fully God and fully man. Thank you that you died in my place on my behalf and that you rose again. And right now, for all of those here who want to have that new start with him, to mark this Easter day, this resurrection day, with a decision to follow him, why don't you just pray this prayer along with me, and you will be starting that new life. Lord Jesus Christ, 
I thank you that you are the one who died for me. I invite you into my life. I ask you to come and transform my life. To fill my life with purpose and with power and with your promises. And I will follow you and I will serve you and I will trust you to lead me into life in all its fullness. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, then we would so love to, to know about that. Just press that button on your screen right now, bottom right-hand side, that says, yes, I prayed that prayer, and, and I want you to know about it. And we'd love to help you along that journey because it's personal, but it's not lonely or private. We do this together. So do let us know. Do get in touch. Do have a great Easter day this year. Thank you. Yeah, let's respond by worshipping the Lord um, in song together. Greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive Empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive And oh, happy day Happy day, you wash my sin away. And oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free at last, Meeting face to face, I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. Endless joy, perfect peace, earthly pain finally will see. Celebrate, cause Jesus is alive. He's alive and no oh, happy day. Happy day, you wash my sin away. And oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. And oh, what a glorious day. What a glorious way that you have saved me. And oh, what a glorious way. What a glorious name. And oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. And oh, Happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, oh, 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 oh. forever I am changed, oh, 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 happy
don't have to strive for grace In the fight you take my place No, I don't have to hide away You are by my side I don't have to find a way In the night your word won't change No side or not to find my faith You are by my side And when the 